Hello, everyone. My name is Rachel Dargenio, the EY America's Mobility Markets Leader. Welcome to the next edition of the EY Mobility Reimagined video series, Defining the Future of Mobility. Today, I am joined by Monica Tull, EY Mobility Partner, and Sean Orm, the EY Global Immigration Leader. Thank you both for joining me today. Good morning, Rachel. Good morning, Rachel. Thanks for having us. Monica and Sean are focused on helping clients take immigration programs into the future by transforming the immigration service offering from the transactional to the strategic. Today, we will be discussing how immigration is evolving to meet changing business needs. Sean, how would you describe the landscape of global immigration today? Well, Rachel, I think there's really three defining factors in today's immigration landscape. I think the first is case complexity, uh, the second is the war for talent, and the third is data-driven strategy. I think in terms of case complexity, uh, global immigration has become more complex due to shifting geopolitical landscape and frankly, increasing protectionism. Additionally, COVID-19 has made immigration compliance more challenging and requires organizations to adopt a strategic advisory approach to global immigration and mobility. And we're also seeing that the accelerating rate of regulatory changes worldwide is really transforming the nature of work and really intensifying the global war to attract and also retain critical talent. So Monica, what do you see as the biggest change in immigration over the past few years? So Sean just mentioned case complexity and in terms of that ongoing legislative complexity, it's really not just the immigration rules now, but travel restrictions, health checks, immunization requirements, all of these changing on a week by week and a region by region basis. Keeping on top of that is more challenging than it's ever been in the past. And it's created an environment where immigration teams are working in a situation of not just a rapid pace of change, but also an underlying pervasive sense of uncertainty. With the increase in case complexity and the war for talent, employers are recognizing they need a new set of tools to successfully manage their immigration programs. Companies need to broaden out their workforce planning strategy and optimize their immigration filing positions to ensure that they have the broadest possible skills sponsorship. And in that context, access to timely and accurate data, ensuring a positive employee experience consistently has never been more important to global organizations. With all this change, what do you think are the key themes currently impacting the risks that are driven by immigration? When it comes to immigration, so much has changed and the level of risk in the way it's presenting itself has shifted from even just a few years ago. Immigration risk really used to be principally around concerns with compliance with specific laws in the destination country. Whereas today, the risk in immigration might not always arise from immigration breach itself. It might be related to tax or even cost exposures arising by virtue of employees, immigration status, and the dynamics of the labor market. Yeah, Monica, I would agree. And I think the most really significant drivers of risk-related immigration that we're experiencing is really related to the current talent landscape and really also workforce dynamics. Uh, the war for talent is quite heated. It's really shaping immigration programs and changing the way we need to look at risk. And I think there's a couple of ways this is really presenting itself. I think first and foremost is the local hiring of foreign nationals. Uh, now the shift to acquire talent locally has really been underway for many years in some markets. But it's especially evident with the restrictions on mobility during uh, the pandemic era. And by far the bulk of activity, for example, most US programs that we're seeing right now is for change of employer applications, extension and renewals, not necessarily applications from people moving to the US. I think where this gives rise to risk in most programs is not the country of hiring necessarily, but really the country of origin. I think this population has the right to work in their home country, or for example, EU nationals, they have a right to work in uh, which they may voluntarily base themselves in any EU country. So it's not necessarily an immigration risk per se, but it does present tax risk, cost exposures, and even potentially, I think some you know, labor relations risks. Yeah, that's, that's right, Sean. And, and this can present surprise obligations as well as penalty and interest exposures for companies that don't execute properly on the ensuing payroll and corporate tax obligations that can arise. And they can be hard to predict and manage if the company isn't tracking employee locations. Beyond the tax risks, of course, there are also labor issues that need to be addressed. 
most employers have had to grapple with the questions of pay parity in addition to consistency of remote work approvals. Uh, that's the labor relations risk that employers need to address. Yeah, I think another significant trend presenting in today's uh, programs is really around uh, employee expectations. I think the COVID era has really shown a light on employers' desire to keep their employees safe and really support them during disasters. I think the urgency and priority around this, what I'll call duty of care concept, is really taking a front seat in terms of how it, of how it shapes mobility and immigration programs more broadly. Companies must also thoughtfully respond to the new set of employee expectations and really integrate these anticipations into the programs of the future. So what is an example of employee expectations intersecting with the change shape of hiring a foreign talent that you've seen in the market? Well, Rachel, in certain situations, I think people hire locally and expecting to be in country for the longer term. I want to bring accompanying family members with them who would traditionally not fit within the definition of a quote unquote dependent, for example, aging parents. In a local hire situation, it might seem that, let's say at first glance, there's really no problem with this since the company can sponsor the visa and there's no additional employer cost for allowances. But I think it's important to understand what sponsorship obligations are attached to this kind of decision and what undertakings the company is making by sponsoring such a visa. There are usually several obligations and liabilities attached to visa sponsorship. These range from taking responsibility for the visa holders' compliance with local laws, to assuming responsibility for certain costs of the sponsored individuals, among others. Yeah, Sean, that's an interesting example. Um, we actually had a client a couple of years ago who did exactly that. They agreed to sponsor uh, an employee's parents to join the family in a Southeast Asian country. And while that was legal, the sponsorship was uh, authorized. The, the issue for the company was around a commitment to provide medical assurance, insurance. Sorry, no one uh, had thought about covering the parents in terms of the policy but the employer had signed up to the sponsorship obligation to cover any expenses that the, those individuals might incur in a country that were not able to be settled by the family. Um, and so in the end, to minimise the exposure to potentially significant international medical expenses, the company ended up purchasing global medical travel insurance policies uh, that cost over $10,000 for each parent, which was a complete surprise in terms of uh, the, the project's budget. So considering how much in immigration is intertwined with personal tax and other significant financial considerations, how important is an employer's immigration policy or even their reputation in attracting and retaining talent? Rachel, it's a great question. And we keep coming back to this concept of a war for talent because truly it's so impactful in the immigration space. I think more and more employers are recruiting for similar skill sets so the need to be competitive is even more important than frankly it's ever been. I think employers are increasingly focused on taking steps to attract and retain talent and candidates employees will compare oftentimes an employer's immigration and mobility policy, not only with industry competitors, but a whole array of other similar employers in other industries. In many ways, I think immigration factors are increasingly significant to the, to the decision-making process around the decision to accept a job offer or in certain circumstances to remain with an employer. So what does this all mean and how do we get ahead of it? Well, I think the key to addressing the potential risk really should include having good information. And I think this goes both internally and externally. Let me start externally. Externally, you wanna ensure that you have good, reliable sources of information that's up to date and really is easily dispersed across your organization. And I think internally, you really wanna know where your people are and make sure your tracking includes not just expats and business travelers, but also local employees. Know their nationality and determine a way to monitor locations for everyone to really drive technology-driven data insights. Yeah, Sean, I would say that the other major key here is to drive clear communication with uh, employees and others throughout the organization on remote work and its implications. So um, organizations need to make sure everyone knows what the policy is, both employees, and the business leadership who will be asked to make decisions about people on their teams. And then related to that, establishing a process for employees to follow to ensure that any risks can be identified and addressed up front uh, and managed appropriately. And then finally, aligning with the talent team to make sure that your offerings and experience around immigration and remote work are consistent with the expectations of your workforce. 
I pay particular attention to, here to uh, employees who have multiple immigration statuses or cross-border interests so that you can provide a compelling story for your company in the hopes of winning the war for talent. Monica and Sean, thank you both for joining me today and sharing your insights on the changes in immigration and the wide sweeping impacts to both employers and employees. I look forward to our next release in this EY Mobility Reimagined video series. We'll talk soon. Thank you. Thank you.